sample 5. The table gives information regarding the pipes and the reservoirs. The first letter denotes the reservoir and the second letter is J which represents the junction where the pipes leading to the reservoirs meet. Calculate the flow rate in each pipe. So to help analyze the situation, let's do the figure first. So we are sure that reservoir A will supply and reservoir C receives. So let's investigate first the position of the piezometric level by comparing, by assuming first that there's no flow in or out of B. So we can compare Q1 prime with Q3 prime. But if you look at the figure, reservoir C is very far and its diameter is 800 mm. So anticip to anticipate the situation, both reservoirs A and B must supply C. So that's the initial finding because the diameter of C is very big compared to the two pipes and secondly C is very far from the upper reservoirs. But anyway, let's compute for Q1 prime the the head loss when there's no flow at B would be 100 minus 90 or 10. So 10 equals 0 0.0826 times 0 0.02 length 1800 Q1 prime square over diameter 0.4 to the fifth. So Q1 prime is 0 0.1856 cubic meter per second if there's no flow in or out of reservoir B or Q2 is 0. Then Q3 prime, the isometric level is at B. That's the assumption. 90 minus 30 is 60. So 60 equals 0 0.0826, friction factor 0 0.03, length 4000, Q3 prime square over diameter 0 0.8 to the fifth. So Q3 prime is 1.408 cubic meter per second, which is very much greater than Q1 prime. So therefore, Q2 must help, or reserva B must help to supply C. So direction of flow to B would be outflow. And the equation would be Q1 plus Q2 equals Q3. So to, let's locate the piezometric level. It should be between V and C as shown. And that's the energy grade line. And that's Q2 supposedly. So therefore this is HF1, we will denote HF1 as H since the difference between A and B is 10. So in terms of H, HF2 is H minus 10. Then HF3 would be this and 100 minus 30 is 70. Therefore, HF3 is 70 meters minus H. So discharge formula Q1 plus Q2. Uh, Q equals square root of HF to the fifth, uh, HF diameter to the fifth over square root of 0 0.0826 friction factor length. And the equation is Q1 plus Q2 equals Q3. So Q1 is square root of H times 0.4 to the fifth over 0 0.0826 friction factor 0 0.02 length 1800 plus Q2 square root of quantity h minus 10 times diameter 0 0.5 to the fifth over 0 0.0826 point zero two five length is 2000 and it should be equal to q3 which is square root of quantity 70 minus h diameter 0 0.8 to the fifth over 0 0.0826 friction factor 0 0.03 length 4000 so simplifying inside we have 0 0.05868 square root of h plus 0 0.08699 square root of h minus 10 equals 0.1818 square root of 70 minus h. So by trial and error, we anticipate that h is between, it should be greater than 10, but less than 60 or less than 70. So that's the range of values of h. So until the left is equal to the right, so 
my trial and error h is equal to 45.02 meters. Having found h equals 45.02 meters, we can now compute q1, 0 0.05868 square root of 45.02. So q1 equals 0.3937 cubic meter per second, and it is an outflow. Q2 is this term here, 0 0.08699 square root of 45.02 minus 10. So Q2 is also outflow, 0.5148 cubic meter per second. It is an outflow. And finally, for Q3, which is the only inflow, 0.1818 square root of 70 minus 45.02. So 0 0.9086 cubic meter per second, and it is an inflow. So to check, Q1 plus Q2 must be more or less equal to Q3. More or less because, remember, we round off values. So there's a very small difference, but they are practically the same. That's it.